Uh, you probably are familiar with this already. It's our suite of uh, defense assessment areas, of which we have eight main defense areas. Uh, consider ACE the, the main engine, powered by the fuel of ThreatSeeker. ThreatSeeker is our big data collection system. We're currently processing around 5 billion events per day coming into that system. Uh, everything from uh, spam campaigns, malicious email campaigns, uh, business email compromise attacks, uh, website compromises, uh, adware, uh, new social media websites, etc. Uh, from our own proactive scanning of the threat landscape, uh, but also some customer uh, telemetry feeds as well, uh, which are really useful because it makes our, our analytics grounded in real world uh, behavior that the malware authors are conducting. So ACE is the engine, ThreatSook is the fuel, and then we have a model that we apply to threats so that we can better understand the threats of the external attacker. And all of this uh, is, is built into our uh, security technologies. Let's do. A, let's take a, a closer look at this um, seven stages, the, the model that we use to model the threat lifecycle. Now, the threat lifecycle as it appears here looks linear. So I'll describe each of the, these in turn, uh, and then you'll see how you can take a, a newspaper article, uh, or, or if you might see something on the television that describes a particular, say, a ransomware attack or a phishing attack, you'll be able to map that attack to this model and understand how Forcepoint can intercept the attack and protect our customers. So stage one is the reconnaissance phase. Uh, the reconnaissance phase is typically done uh, over social media. Um, the malware author will understand the uh, individuals within an organization. Uh, he will probably look up various pieces of information about that organization uh, and determine their likelihood of, of, of paying their ransom, for example. You might see that, oh yes, this is a, it's a hospital, it, it, it's in a, a particular state in the US, uh, they might be willing to pay a ransom demand if I were to encrypt their, their data. Um, one such attack uh, you're probably very familiar with, a hospital out in California, that did actually pay a $17,000 ransom to get their money back. So the malware author would have done his reconnaissance, uh, figured out they could probably afford to pay that, and then decided to attack them. Now the law stage is uh, the first tool in the malware author's arsenal, uh, most notably an email, an incoming email, or a, a website. So an incoming e email could be a, a, a malicious attachment, it could have a URL inside of the body of the email, it could have both. Uh, or it could be a compromised website. Uh, it, it might be a perfect setup that the malware author compromises uh, the website of a supplier to that hospital, uh, knowing full well that the hospital has to order um, components, drugs, tools from that supplier's website. Uh, that's how they then uh, compromise that, uh, that hospital. Uh, quite often, the malware author would then redirect the end user around the web uh, to try and disguise the activity from uh, law enforcement, from the security operation center, from ourselves. Um, fortunately, our products are able to follow all of those redirects that uh, often end up at, a, at an exploit kit of some sort. Uh, the likes of Neutrino, uh, RIG, uh, Nuclear Exploit Kit, etc. The sole purpose is to determine which versions of software are running on the end user machine and then uh, hit that machine with various uh, exploits that target an issue, a vulnerability within that software. Uh, we know that Adobe Flash uh, does often suffer from numerous uh, vulnerabilities uh, that have been coded into that uh, application and the malware authors seek to uh, literally exploit those and uh, might uh, and then incur uh, something like a, a buffer overflow, stack overflow, that allows them to execute code remotely, uh, so-called remote code execution, RCE. Uh, then a file is dropped onto that machine. Uh, that file can probably scout around the network, uh, start gathering the data that it wishes to steal, and then send that out via a call home, uh, sometimes encrypted uh, via uh, HTTPS, uh, really 
important to highlight to customers that nowadays they really need this um, you know, SSL inspection technologies to be able to cover off the 10% or so of, of malware that uh, uses encrypted traffic for call home. Uh, then, of course, it results in data theft. Or in the case of ransomware, what I call data destruction incident. If your files are encrypted, you cannot get them back. You can consider those files lost. So this, uh, this slide here seems to indicate that the kill chain is linear. Unfortunately, malware authors don't always follow uh, the information on, on the slides. Uh, the reconnaissance phase could actually be a seven-stage life cycle in itself. Um, the data theft of that seven-stage attack might just be the model number of the firewall so that the malware authors know which, uh, how, how to exploit it and how to bypass it. It could be that the redirect and the exploit kit stage are not used at all. The actual law could be suitably social engineer the victim so that they are encouraged to run that attachment and then uh, it might initiate a multi-stage dropper. Uh, the first file might just um, it would be a, a nested zip file that then points to an executable. The sole purpose of that is to then point to a, a website and pull down another executable or, or PDF that might then have embedded uh, malicious code inside of it. So it could be a multi-stage dropper. So this this, this threat lifecycle, a reconnaissance stage could be an actual seven-stage lifecycle itself. Uh, the redirect and the exploit kit might be missed. Um, the dropper file might be multi-stage dropper file, an XE pointing to an XE pointing to an actual uh, you know, uh, URL. And the call home stage might be encrypted. Uh, and then data theft occurs. That, that's when you're really looking for um, uh, data loss prevention uh, technology to help out as well. So that's the threat lifecycle model that we use here at uh, Force Point Security Labs, uh, sometimes called the kill chain.